Good morning, wrestling fans, and welcome to PWR Today, Tuesday morning, April 26, 2022. The man they call me did, the lovely Linda Kay. We are, you know, it's not March. We're not at the end of a rainbow. We're not in a pot of gold, but we were having a very good Tuesday morning. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Meathead. We are in episode 501. Oh, like my favorite PWR Levi's. Today. Yes. Well, you know what? This just came to me. The reason why I said it like that is... um. Did you or do you watch the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon at all? Or when he had the I lead? don't you know what I don't hate Jimmy, right? I like Jimmy. Jimmy's okay. I'm not a big fan of Jay Leno. You know, I used to love Conan, but uh no, mm-hmm. Jimmy's yes. okay. I love oh. Jimmy. I only brought that up because uh, at the beginning of every episode, I don't know if they still do it, but as they you know, after the intro and they're about to bring him out through the curtain, Quest Love will say the episode number will be like, for example, five oh one and then they bring out Jimmy. See, so, I like that. Yeah. I don't know if we can uh, do that every time. It, it would... <laughs> no, and I, I do not joke here. Uh, obviously, you know, in the last 10, 15 years, I put on a little weight, but my favorite jeans were button flies. I love the button fly. 501s. 501s. Remember when they had the Levi store at the mall in Milwaukee at Southridge? They had a specific Levi's store. Levi Strauss and Company. Levi Strauss and Company. They had their own little store. Well, you know what other company would be awesome if they had a store at our local mall, your local I mall? I throw them up. Local mall? I throw them up. You knock them out. Go. That would be collar and elbow. This would be a unique way to not just see, but feel and try on the comfortable, fashionable, rustic yeah. street attire. Go to collarandelbowbrand.com and to save a little extra cash, to save 10% off your order, use promo code Linda K. That's L-I-N-D-A-K-A-Y. That's fantastic. Yeah, I would love to have a collar and elbow little pop-up store show up in Southridge. Uh, folks that don't know in the Milwaukee area, not in the Milwaukee area, Southridge is the main mall in the city. So it used yeah, to be in Northridge way, way back in the day. Mm. I was just going to say at, at WrestleCon in Dallas, there was the, you know, the Collar Elbow table tent, if you mm-hmm. will. So it was a nice little pop-up shop there. Shout out to the Collar Elbow guys. You guys rock. That's right. New, uh, new merchandise out there, too. I don't know if you've seen it lately. Uh, they've been popping up. There was the Tiger, uh, Tiger Driver t-shirt that came up and a couple other ones that have been on the website as well. Yeah, definitely check it out. It's springtime, spring fashions, and it'll be summertime before you know it. And then, yeah, I was going to say, it'll almost be summer, summer, summertime, summertime. Summertime. Oh, oh, well, I remember when I liked you. All right. Let's go into the news. Sorry, that was a little shot there. Let's go into the news. Hey, so Raw last night was in Knoxville, Tennessee, right? Mm -hmm. Tennessee. uh, And I have news that has nothing to do with WWE in Knoxville. Billy Corrigan, he smashed a bunch of pumpkins in the 90s, and now he owns the National Wrestling Alliance. We all know Billy. Billy is bringing the next NWA pay-per-view to Knoxville. Uh, This is huge news, and it's being named after one of Matt Cardona's favorite sayings, always ready. Yeah, that is tremendous. Great to hear the the NWA pay-per-view hitting up a town that obviously historically known for wrestling and fresh in our minds as you said that's where raw was last night uh but yeah touring a little bit more getting more more word out there more opportunities for fans to see any way live and in yep. action is that where we're, live and in act live and in your face um wherever you enjoy live pro wrestling that's great to hear I love to hear that the the NWA is thriving. I think Billy's done a great job with that. Again, we've run. I mean, you have, I have. They, we all have run into Billy, you know, and the different things that we've done. Uh, Billy was actually, I think, the first time and only time I've ever met him. Uh, it was the first ever live, God, what was it? It was the first ever live impact in Chicago at the Sears Center. And we were up in the box. Were you at that show? I don't remember. I, if it wasn't the Sears Center, there it was. I believe I was. I mean, I was definitely at one. I'm not sure if that's the same one that we were at. It, there was hmm. a Hulk Hogan meet and greet. Let's put it that way. That I, I got Hulk Hogan was there, it. and he was on crutches. Yeah, uh, so the it was the were. same one. Yeah. Okay. Again, I don't remember. We've Linda, we've done all these things. I can't keep track of half of this stuff. Mm-hmm. But we were up. Uh, at, I don't know if it was the Dixie Box or whatever it was. But then um, we had to seat fill at the end. Did you do that too? 
No. No? Huh. Like I said, I can't keep track of half of that. I feel stuff. like I was in a suite near you. I was, I was in the <laughs> radio stuff. Because I remember, I remember seeing, I remember Damien. And I, I didn't get to do the, you guys did some media stuff. I was there with the radio. Yeah. And, but I got to um, attend that meet and greet and meet Cole Hogan. So that, that was cool in itself. Yeah, I think, you know what, I feel like you were in the booth next to us, or in one of the suites next to us, because then we went and did some PWR stuff down the hallway. <laughs> I, yeah, again, time flies. I, time flies. I can't, I remember that show. That was, again, they had the ramp. So it was one of those stage ramps where it wasn't, you know, go down and then go back up. It was one of those, like, uh, catwalk types. But yeah, Hogan was on crutches. Hardy was there. Uh, it was an amazing show. It was long, though, because they taped two full impact shows at that show, so... Well, hey, Billy Corrigan bringing NWA to Knoxville. Now, let's talk about a little bit of impact, and I did that on purpose. I kind of wanted to segue. I unfortunately did not get to see Rebellion from this last week. I don't know if you saw it or not, Linda, but we have some news. There is a brand new Impact World Champion, Moose, no longer the champion. It is the walking weapon, Josh Alexander. Uh, this guy screams professional wrestler when you look at him. He's got the ear gear, you know, like Rick Steiner used to wear. Um, and he's always wearing a mouthpiece. I mean, the guy's a huge star. Yeah, Moose, a longtime champion. Uh, anytime there's a, a change in, in the title there, uh, huge news there. And yeah, I mean, Josh Alexander also, you know, being. I wonder if he'll show up at like, OVW now. Yes. <laughs> Perhaps. Hey, as you know, it, it's not being overdone, but the Forbidden Doors are still open. Everywhere is it's whiskey. always still swinging. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's talk about Raw last night. And I got to tell you, Raw had a different feel last night. Not only was it not officially announced, but it was kind of hinted to and kind of talked about. Raw last night was the 20th anniversary for Randy Orton. And they showed Randy Orton's WWE debut on Proper TV. You know, he was in OVW before. Uh, Randy Orton debuted on April 24th. 20 or 2002 i almost said 2022 2002 with a roll-up victory on hardcore holly do you remember that i mean you were watching i was watching do you remember yeah. uh, that young randy orton getting a roll-up win on hardcore holly yeah i did watch smackdown since his inception as well and with a thunk 20 years later he's better than ever i mean and to be honest uh, yes give some credit to riddle because really, Riddle really brought up the fun of Randy Orton. And Randy, you can see it in his face. And oh my God, it. Randy Orton to me was always that star that I personally can you know go either way on. You know, he was either face or heel or whatever, but it was fun watching him work. Randy seems to be enjoying himself, which makes me enjoy him more because I see it just coming out of his face. And Randy Orton is finally hitting that sweet spot. It's like Paul Molitor for the Brewers. Paul Mahler was great for the first 10 years of his career, other brewers, but never made it. And then he found it. And then Paul Mahler took off to another level. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it started last week. I know I sent a funny clip of uh, the bump to both you and Matthew. Uh, yeah. They were discussing Randy Orton being a guest on there to celebrate the start of Randy Orton week, uh, discussing the 20 years of Orton. And that was really cool to see. They had the other talents at, at ringside and the and not just the b and c level talents and, and again this is no slight to anybody but when they do stuff like that you know the the main eventers are normally not at ringside yeah you, you see miz there smiling and clapping for him as well that well, was pretty cool there uh <laughs> and then we ended up getting Cody Rhodes coming out as the surprise, which was awesome. And then, of course, it made you think about them when they were in the tag team. And then uh -huh. the best part of that remember, it was Legacy. It was Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, and who's the third? They showed it. Legacy. At DiBiase Jr., that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, but the third part, I mean, obviously hearing Randy talking was cool. It was almost like Hall of Fame-esque. This is a little, a little preview, a little taste of what his Hall of Fame That promo uh, package at the beginning be. was And amazing. just a speech thanking those who helped him along the way tremendously mm -hmm. uh but <laughs> the part that did make me pop that segment though is once seth rounds just starts laughing and interrupting i'm like oh this is great <laughs> that suit as well so obviously that, that was a nice way to get everything set up for what would be the main event of raw last night but tremendous way to open 
great show of respect. And I really wasn't, I knew they were going to do something, as you said, it was teased, but I really didn't realize to what extent. It could have just been segments or packages throughout the night, coming back yeah. to commercial or yeah. going into commercial. His best, his they didn't have time. Best hits. Yeah. They didn't have time. They packed a three hour show. You know, um, that's a great point, Meathead. I'm just realizing now there weren't many promo recap packages uh-uh. that there have been. Wow. They actually had content to put out there last night. Um, great. Of course, Cody Rhodes comes out. I want you to go back to the Monday after Raw or Monday after WrestleMania, excuse me, the Raw after WrestleMania and think back to how you felt when Ezekiel, Elias' little brother, came out. And remember what we talked about. I said, eh, we'll see. Matthew said, eh, we'll see. Linda, I think you were the same. We'll see how it goes. Here we are now, what, three weeks later, four weeks later? How do you feel about Ezekiel? It's stuff growing out of me. Starting to grow on me too. Um, it, it's it's not bad. It's starting to grow on me too. And you know um, what it is too, though. It's really showcasing what great shape he's in, and even you know, that's another look reminiscent. I love the fringes. It makes me think of Ultimate Warrior and just his physique uh-huh. too. You, you didn't necessarily see all that, and I love how we're still going with the uh, <laughs> him just constantly. Making clear to everyone, especially KO, I am not Elias. I'm his younger brother, Ezekiel. And it's the fact <laughs> of KO just going crazy. Because I know you you had it last week um, on an episode with Matthew, but it's kind of, it's us relating to KO because a lot of the fans, knowing it's not him and the, the name change, wondering what that is, like, no, you're being a liar. So, yeah. yeah. But no, um, and hey, and now he's getting to be in the main event with a right. lot of the top stars. That That's tremendous. That that's that's called the rub, Linda. You know that that's called the rub. He got the rub and got put in a main event. It makes me think back to probably it made me think of an eight man tag that they had in Denver when it was like Denver versus L.A. And it was, you know, one team had on Nuggets jerseys and one team had on like Lakers jerseys. I think it was like Anderson um, or excuse me, Kennedy, you know, Orton. I mean, every top tier name was in the main event. So when I first heard this match announced, I'm like, so what are they going to do for the other two hours and 40 minutes? Seriously, that's, that's what I thought. I'm like, you know, you put eight of the technically, you know, these four feuds or these three feuds into one match at the end of the night. What the hell are you going to do for the rest of the night? They surprised me. Let's talk about it. The show opened up with Bianca Belair, the champion, defending against Sonya Deville. And this was a very Attitude Era-esque match. Hey, I don't like that you counted me out. I'm changing the rules. It's going to be no DQ. Hey, I don't like that you uh, DQ'd me or no count out, no DQ. And then they call in, you know, Carmella and Zelina, and Bianca still finds a way to win. Yeah. Yeah. Sonya Deville, you know, she's still in that top authority role, as we later were shown. But that was a great match. And with even with the shenanigans, it, it just showed – it's just another side of with Raw. Like I, we've seen Sonya, you know, involved with Naomi on SmackDown. Now we're seeing this on Raw with her and Bianca. But uh, the, having an official change to the match right after, right after, just something different that we haven't seen on Raw in a while. And I like that. And and just showing, hey, how strong of a heel she is. She's got two of the other stars there helping her try to win blatantly in the yeah. match, and it still doesn't yeah. matter in, in front of the home her. crowd too, and yeah. in front of Mayor Jacobs. Yes. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, if there's anybody to press in town, it's Mayor Jacobs. Yeah. You know, because he could literally, there. yeah, he could literally set the ring on fire if he wanted yeah. to. Mm-hmm. Raise All right. the hands. <laughs> and he, uh, the best thing about Kane is when he threw his arms down, he always threw it down with such force, like he was out of control and he shook a little bit afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, Veer Mahan, the former Pittsburgh Pirate, is at it again, and he squashed poor Sam Smothers. I wonder if Sam Smothers has a brother, and he can be part of the Smothers Brothers. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Do you know who the Smothers Brothers are from back in the 60s and 70s? Not so much. They had a TV show. Google it, kids. But uh, Sam Smothers gets squashed by Veer Mahan. Um, they're to the point where they're taking him on to they're just, – he's just beating the piss out of him. I wonder if he's going to start losing matches because he's going too far after the bell. Uh, his first loss will be um, against, hmm, I'm trying to think of who. 
maybe get back to me a little bit or a couple of weeks down the line. Okay. We're going to have a couple more weeks of the squash matches here. That's okay. I'm what a... they're doing with Gunther on SmackDown. Gunther. Yeah, I like Gunther. All right. And Gunther did squash the last guy, too. It was um, – and that folding him up in half pin that he does, holy mm-hmm. – All right. Bobby Lashley took on almost in an arm wrestling match. You had kind of mentioned that this one wasn't really announced, and we got this extra thing, too, here. So, I mean, I was pretty excited about this. Bobby wins, but the heel did exactly what he needed to do. Beat down Bobby Lashley after distraction from MVP and then chucked the table on him. Oh, numerous times. My goodness. Yeah. Uh, I, I liked throwing in that arm wrestling segment in there. It was a little different than just a standard face-to-face or a, a contract signing or some type of some other obstacle i'm not sure but or or, or a beat down a surprise beat down and whatnot i liked it they were in it to win it and hey bobby lashley was the stronger of the two and as we expected omas losing therefore and bobby then getting beaten in a different way um but yeah very brutal in that uh yeah later announced that this match will be is official and or unless it already was maybe it's confusing another match but we will get to see the two of them collide at wrestlemania backlash that's fantastic. Hey, um, <laughs> I absolutely love this again. I don't care how corny it was, but uh, our truth is now certified at marriage counseling and keeping people together. He's also certified at being a referee. And then Corey Graves summed it up perfectly. Oh, yeah, you can do that on the Internet. It takes about nine minutes. <laughs> that's how I became a priest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, that's good stuff. But uh, basically what he did to try to get him back together, Akira Tozawa and Tamina took on Dana Brooke and uh, Reggie in a mixed tag team match. And it's not Dana Brooks. It's Brooke. 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 Um, Tamina hmm, Tamina and Tozawa, Dana Brooke and Reggie. See, I've, I've kind of complained about this for how many years now that we've had the 24-7 belt. They turned the rules off for the 27-4 or 24-7 championship during the match. Why don't you just lose that match and win the belt by getting disqualified? Because the second the bell rings, you can roll them up for the pin and get the hell out of there. Aha. Our truth tries to make a room for Dana Brooke to get out, tries to schoolboy her and count the pin himself, and then gets kicked out on while he's trying to count the pin. That was absolutely fantastic. I was kind of hoping he would have got it back that way, leading up that good in the culmination of him yeah. trying to uh, uh, get yeah. what's the word? officiate their um, it wasn't a he, offici- he was an official of uh, it was a commitment ceremony. Of the commitment ceremony thank you but just this whole journey of them all finding love and him helping them yeah. a little well you know Willie said it once that he was looking for love in all the wrong places I don't think that was Willie but uh, but yeah no that that was that was that was great as well but now they're gonna have to continue this but I don't know what else like it, it would have been perfect but that's okay We'll get some more shenanigans with this, and sure. eventually our truth will get his baby back. I want to. my baby back, baby back, baby back. All right, let's continue on, and let's talk about Becky Lynch. Our Becky is back, and it's her first time back since losing at WrestleMania to Bianca. We speculated yesterday morning, Linda. We said our girl, the colorful one, the Empress of Tomorrow, could show up as soon as Raw on Monday the 24th or Monday the 25th. Well, guess who's back? It's the Empress of Tomorrow. And, you know, I kind of mentioned this to you off air. That's Asuka's first time in front of a crowd in two-plus years, three-plus years. I mean, remember, she was wrestling in the Thunderdome era and the, you know, performance era. era. Uh, oof, man, you could see the just the, the goosebumps flowing through her. I know Matthew's not a big fan of uh, the wrestlers singing along to the theme song. We know that Asuka doesn't have a masterful control of the English language, but I love watching her sing her song because she's got that song down pat. Yeah, yeah, that was great to see. Uh, first off, Becky doing her thing on there, and it, it, I love those boots, by the way. It's very Ziggy Stardust for a whole outfit, right? I was gonna say Ziggy Stardust or Gene Simmons. Oh, well, this is maybe that the heels would be stacked up even higher, but no, right. I, she still looks tremendous, and just even any any uh, version or uh, another word. Uh, well, a re-grade, iteration. A re-grade. Yes, yeah. thank you. Of, of Becky Lynch, she just does a tremendous job, and and but yeah, 
her coming out saying that she hit rock bottom, but no, 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 no. If you hit rock bottom, that means you can only go nowhere but up. And her mentioning there's no one, no one can take Somebody that can her. stop her. Stop, yeah. Yes. And the music hits. You know, it took me a second. I was like, yeah oh i got up out of my seat for that one because i was very happy and again that blue that pink that stuff just pops Uh, she uh she was moving pretty again being in front of the crowd that's not just normal asuka she was moving it she was feeling it she was feeling you know fifteen thousand, uh just popping going mad for her being back and uh you know what she's gonna throw uh I, i gotta tell you i we talk about how we pop each other. We talk about little things that pop us. Linda, there will be nothing that gets me more than Asuka flicking Becky's nostril. Yeah, not just the tip of the nose. She got her nostril. It, in the slow-mo. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm mentally like 12 years old, folks. I just want you to know this, but that slow-mo, I put it on slow-mo on the DVR while the slow-mo was going to watch her nose go, oh wah, 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 wah. That, uh, I might have to show my kids that one. That one, <laughs> that just it drives me insane. I might replay that 20 times. I don't know. Let's see if we can make a GIF out of it or a meme or something like that. But yeah, no, Asuka, yeah, <laughs> especially because why they knew what she did. Why did you slow mo it? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I mean, they knew. All right. So after we had gotten the blue light with Edge and Finn Balor, Finn Balor had said that Damien, uh, excuse me, Damien Priest. Uh, he had said that Finn Balor's judgment has come. It is his judgment day. Damian Priest with the win, with the lifting reverse STO. Um, Finn Balor had no chance in this match. None. Yeah, he's had a rough couple of weeks. Um, it was nice getting Finn and Damian. We, we were talking about hoping that we had gotten that match at WrestleMania. Um, yeah. yeah I, I, gosh, Finn Balor's so good. I, I want to him yes. back in a higher higher spotlight um they had the title on him and I, i'm not sure if he goes for that one can he go to both brands does he do mxt again no i i think that having him on raw with the momentum that raw has right now and just you're right that's a good word raw has momentum mm-hmm. i i went to more momentum for finn balor too okay well, hey, oh, uh, hey, just bring out the demon. Maybe he joins Edge and Damian Priest. Uh, maybe, maybe it's right in front of us and we're not seeing it. You know, when we we're thought it'd be it's Rhea. Rhea, right? Maybe like, it's look, Finn. Who knows? Because he had so. that, he had that match against Roman Reigns last year. A lot of people made fun of it, but I like the heartbeat. In the, do you remember that last year? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't remember what summer pay per view was, but every time you hear the, you know, Finn started pulsating like the beat of the demon. I like that. I thought it was cool. All right. Hey, we, we this seriously just came about a boot as uh, we were discussing. So mm-hmm. there you go. I mean, we've been known to call some stuff. All right, Miss TV, and he introduces his guest from A Town Down. It's just theory. Now, I like the little wordplay that they did in there, where he says it took me forever to earn the the on the Miz. You know, because Theory didn't catch it. He's got the at the beginning of his name as well. He goes, no, 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 I'm not the Theory. Mr. McMahon said I'm just Theory. <laughs> All right, just Theory. <laughs> See, it was actually pretty funny. And he gets to the point of, look, you're the United States champion. You shouldn't be allowing this open challenge nonsense. You shouldn't be allowing people just come tell you that they're going to be doing anything. Music hits. What's this music for? Who is this? And they intentionally don't show the ramp. That's Mustafa Ali. That's the guy that said he wanted to be cut loose of his contract. Well, look who's back and back on TV with a microphone. Mustafa Ali. Linda, we didn't know this was coming, but there he is. Yeah, I'm happy for him. I I wanted, you know, it was known about how his feelings were as of late and as you just mentioned. Uh, but things worked out where now, yes, he is back on and back on TV, back on Raw. And great to see him here. And looked healthy, looked against, happy. Yeah, yep. putting him against theory. I think that's a great matchup. And even this whole segment here, giving him the mic, letting him do his thing, standing his own against both theory and Miz. Or sorry, the Miz. <laughs> <laughs> it's a the Miz. Yeah. Um, that was funny right there too. Um, in that segment. But yeah, happy to see him. Another great surprise on Raw last night. This is just we've talked about how 
strong Raw has been last night. Definitely had yeah. a lot going on. You know what? Actually, a great little wordplay between Miz and Ali, because he says, you know what? After I'm done with you, you're going to wish they had given you your release. Ooh, that's that little, you know, they're talking about something that happened off the TV and on the Internet and all that other good stuff. So I like little bits like that. That's good stuff. So Mustafa Ali taking on the Miz. Wait, um, what folks, about Miz calling him Mustafa? Mustafa, uh, his younger yeah. brother. <laughs> yeah, Mustafa. Yeah, yeah. That that got me too. I forgot all about that. I'm still I'm still stuck on a nostril flicking. <laughs> um, but Mustafa Ali taking on <laughs> yeah, that is funny. Mustafa Ali taking on the Miz and folks. I hope that with DraftKings you didn't put any money on the Miz here because this was Mustafa Ali's match to lose and he won it with a uh, folding press. Post match, Ali got ambushed by Chamaso Champa, our guy from Milwaukee, with no answer. What's going on there? Well, I thought it was going to be something good with Ali and Theory, but looks like instead we're getting Champa Ali. Hey, both physical guys and both from the Midwest area, not too close. Had Milwaukee and Chicago there, I'm sure. Yep. Ali from Chicago, yeah. Before and I'm into it. Although I, I'm surprised, I thought Champa's. He turned around was going to have him be a face, but hey, you know, he's rough and he's tough, and having him as a heel, yeah, that works just as well. So, Rhea Ripley got interviewed backstage and it was asked why she attacked Liv. Well, Liv attacks her right away and they start brawling. The Kevin Owens, uh, Seth Rollins Alpha Academy stuff, the bickering beforehand, I don't care about what the Usos did, but Kevin Owens yelling at uh, Seth Rollins, uh, had me going. He's like, no, no, I told you, you're a liar. I don't want you. You guys are getting on my nerves. Like, yes. Kevin's going to lose it. And uh, Chad Gable literally telling uh, Kevin Owens, to shush, please. <laughs> Talking. It was actually, no, he shushed Seth Rollins. That's what it was. Because he was, uh, Kevin said he's not paying uh, <laughs> Chad for the lie detector stuff last week. See, I like that. It's all, there's synergy there. There's, you know, continuation of stories. I enjoy that stuff. All right, so good stuff. But now the entrances. Cody Rhodes, Ezekiel, and RK Bro taking on Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, and the Usos in the main event. Um, Rhodes, Ezekiel, RK Bro win by pinfall with the RKO from Randy Orton on Jay Uso. This felt like, you know those matches that they advertise when your uh, town is getting a local Raw or a SmackDown and the, yeah. you know, untelevised main event? That's what this was. That's what this felt like. It felt like they gave them everything because it was all sugar. At the end, it was RKO's. It was RKO's. It was RKO's. This was the match that we should be getting more often. Not this particular match, but this type of feel. Yeah. And what a way to not just begin the show, the Orton celebration, but end it in a way where we're still celebrating him, giving him four straight RKO's. The crowd's happy. Just a great feel. Having Cody and Randy, Riddle, and Elijah's younger brother, Ezekiel, uh, part of that big celebration there in the very end. Um, yeah, that it, I didn't really think about that, too. You said it just now, when you see the advertisements for shows coming to town, it's it's something that's advertised. It doesn't mean it'll necessarily happen as well, just because, hey, right. obviously, cards are card subject to change. It's yeah. closer. Maybe it's something we get as a post-dark match, but... Um, Hey, just continue that celebration and just feel good episode. Feel good, feel good town there in Knoxville. They they got Randy Orton celebration. They got Bianca Belair's homecoming. They got the mayor there. They got um, Asuka. They, they got, got, they got uh, Mustafa Ali. I mean, they got everything. I mean, seriously, at WWE, I hope we didn't blow your load all on one night in Knoxville. <laughs> Uh, that should be the title of uh, <laughs> Mayor Jacobs' new books, How I Blew My Load in One Night in Knoxville. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm kidding. Even though Randy Orton was born in Knoxville, apparently, according to the oh, yeah. uh, beginning promo there. Yeah. So that's when Cowboy Bob Orton blew his load in Knoxville. Oh. Just kidding. It got awkward there. All right. Let us move on. Uh, we've got big, st big stuff popping, little things dropping. Again, tomorrow morning, it's Linda Kay and Matthew Thomas. Getting us ready for Dynamite, recapping everything NXT and so much more. Linda, I hope you have a good week. I will talk to you next week. I will talk to you guys next uh, Thursday morning. For Linda Kay, the man they called me did. Thanks for stopping by. So long, everyone.